You are listening to an InfoWars.com frontline report. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. This is from Soldier Station at Fort Hood, Texas. The information is that special forces are going into Libya in July. They're already there, ladies and gentlemen. Just more from Hood. Uh, First Cavalry Division, Heavy Armor, and Third Corps are deploying to Libya in late October and early November. That means ground war involvement in the plan. Well, yeah, that's 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 always been the plan. Please do whatever you can. The following information is extremely grave. The United States is in the midst of one of the greatest constitutional crises in our history. For more than three months, United States forces on the ground and in the air have been attacking the sovereign military forces of Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. We've been told that this is not a war, but a kinetic action. We've been told that tens of thousands of dead on both sides is a humanitarian operation. And we were told by Obama that the action would last days, not weeks. Infowars.com can now conclusively report that the date of a full ground invasion of Libya by U.S. military forces under NATO and U.N. command is set for October and November of 2011, just three months away. Larger contingents of U.S. Special Forces are already preparing to move into the nation in mid-July. Infowars.com can now report information that we've been gathering over the last month from multiple sources known to us inside Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, yes, I did, Alex. I'm actually um, former special operations and paramilitary contractor. And uh, everything you said has been 100% accurate as far as the troops in Libya and uh, special ops down there in Libya and Pakistan and stuff like that. Everything you've said so far has been 100% accurate. The 1st Cavalry Division, Heavy Armor, and three corps are deploying to Libya. The troops we've talked to on and off air are all extremely concerned. They know that Congress wasn't even consulted and Obama, quote, used the U.N.'s authority as the power to launch this new war. You heard it here first, America, and the rest of the world listening. A huge expansion of the war in Libya with at least 12,000 frontline troops set to smash into Muammar Gaddafi's forces coming up in October and November. Um, I'm with the mortuary affairs section, but, you know, I'm tracking uh, our dead fellow soldiers coming in from, you know, which country that they get killed. So I'm, I'm already tracking guys from coming from Libya that are, you know, already getting killed. If we allow the escalation of this illegal war, what comes next? Well, we already know. Drone attacks in Yemen and ground invasion of Syria. Many of the troops we've talked to have been told that this will be the beginning of World War III and the complete occupation of North Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia. My friends, we stand at the precipice. The entire world is rushing towards World War III by any measurement or definition. The private offshore banks that dominate Europe and the United States are invading countries all over the Middle East, North Africa, and trying to start a war as well with Pakistan. This is all happening as the world economy has imploded and as the private central banks openly announce a private corporate bank of the world that our carbon taxes will be paid into. Our sources inside the Pentagon in D.C. and at Fort Hood, Texas, as well as others, have confirmed that major armored divisions out of Fort Hood and other bases are set to be sent late in September into October into Libya, a full-scale ground war. Meanwhile, Obama comes out and says he doesn't need any authorization from Congress and that Libya is not a war. Now he's threatening to go into Sudan. They've got warships off the coast of Syria, and our media and senators are openly calling for war. The Russians are threatening to respond.
now the CIA has expanded drone attacks in Yemen, and that government, a uh, supposed ally, is toppled. The former darling of the establishment, Hazi Mubarak, the 31-year dictator of Egypt, was overthrown by a U.S., uh, British slash Europe backed military coup and citizens are being arrested in mass. No protest is allowed. This is amazing. Al Qaeda backed forces in the east of Libya uh, are now being augmented by U.S. and British special forces. But it doesn't stop there. Pakistan months ago told the United States, stop your thousands of drone attacks. Our country doesn't care. It's going forward with a supposed ally, driving him into the hands of China and Russia. U.S. warships have entered the Black Sea. Russia is saying that this appears to be a provocation. Uh, China and Russia are warning that wider conflicts could erupt from this. The word we're getting from our military sources and officers is that They've been told that basically a giant war in North Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia is about to be launched as a political smokescreen for the financial collapse that's happening in the West because they know populations in Europe, England, and the United States and Canada will rally around the government as the depression intensifies if they're in the middle of a war. Also, the establishment can use stage terror attacks or provocateur attacks or real attacks launched by Muammar Gaddafi uh, as a last-ditch effort to hold on to power. That can then be used to take our liberties domestically here at home. We're seeing the rollout of the TSA on the streets of America. Uh, we're seeing uh, open uh, spy groups being formed through pastors uh, and lawyers and community organizers to spy on their fellow Americans. All of the classical forms of tyranny are now unfolding. And a giant multi-region war that will undoubtedly suck in China and Russia is now being launched. That's why they gave President Barack Obama, right after he got into office, the peace prize. They knew that all these new wars were going to be launched, but that they would be called peace. This is Obama's global peace tour. First, he sold as this anti-war liberal. The planet bows down before him after eight years of warmongering and lies about WMDs by George W. Bush. And then Obama launches new conflicts across the globe, but dubs them as humanitarian and bringing peace and tells the world giant mushroom clouds and uh, huge buildings being blown into pieces is not war. It is humanitarian liberation. And the controlled corporate dinosaur media said, you don't understand. These new wars are not wars. These are kinetic actions. And these are to bring peace. We were told Al-Qaeda were the good guys in the east of Libya going after Muammar Gaddafi. We were told that bombing their cities and killing thousands was humanitarian. And now we're told that a new war, I'm sorry, peace action needs to be launched against Syria, and U.S. warships are waiting off the coast. Obama says he's concerned about what's happening in Sudan, and there might need to be a military bombardment there. Yemen is being carpet-bombed by hundreds of predator drones. And the media says, look at our peacemaker. Look at our king. Look at him. Our great new general, Obama, he doesn't need Congress for authority. He has the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, last year at Bilderberg, and again, just a few weeks ago at Bilderberg in St. Moritz in Switzerland, our sources who have been very accurate in the past have reported to us that this is part of a global destabilization program that is meant to lead to not just a multi-regional conflict, North Africa, Middle East, Central and South Asia, but to engulf China and Russia in destabilizing color revolutions. But the globalists won't stop there. They must destroy every nation state. They must destroy every currency. They must destroy every economy. So the entire world bows to this world government George Sorosian program of order out of chaos and the private global banking cartel that you will pay your carbon taxes to. It is happening. Meanwhile, it has now been proven what we first reported last year, 
that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives for the last two years knowingly helped ship semi-automatic firearms by the thousands to Mexico in an attempt to then track the weapons back into the United States and connect them to violence in Mexico so the federal government could call for a total ban on all semi-automatic firearms as they have now done. This is incredible. Another example of stage terror, another example of a frame-up, this time targeting the Second Amendment. And CNN, the Houston Chronicle, you name it, has now reported on the fact that over 28,000 people have been killed in Mexico in the last two years, that the Southwest in the United States is now more dangerous than the worst areas of Eastern Europe for kidnapping. Mass graves have been found all over Mexico and on the Texas and California Nevada border with dead children. It's now been confirmed that Western trained, U.S. trained Los Zetas pull over buses full of Mexican civilians, men, women, and children, rape the women and kill them, kill the old people, and take the teenagers and have them fight to the death in gladiatorial games, a form of trauma based mind control. They then take the winners and train them as assassins. So understand, more people are dying a year on the Texas Mexico border than died each year in Vietnam. A true war is going on. A completely collapsed society, a failed state, expanding into the United States, and it's not even on the radar. The media barely reports it. They've got their own giant armored vehicles. It's a full-on war financed by the criminal megabanks that are on record laundering more than $376 billion in just the last few years, are waging a war of drug consolidation, knocking out their competition in Mexico as the Latin American drugs are fed through Southern North America. World War III is here. The whole world is going into crises. The domestic police state is unfolding against the people of our republic. We must take back Washington. We must take back our states. We must identify the fact that offshore private corporations have now hijacked our government and are using it as an instrument of global destabilization to bring in their world government on the ashes of our once free society. All of you Democrats that loved rebuking Bush for war. I certainly rebuked it as a constitutionalist. But all of you that thought it was trendy to be anti-war. Now is the time to understand that we are at a serious crossroads and that Bush was only laying the groundwork for the next puppet that would come, Obama. Obama, the man of peace, the man of desolation, death, and destruction. This war that is about to engulf the world will be one of the most destructive, if not the most destructive, in human history and could lead to thermonuclear war. Please warn everyone you know, World War III is now upon us. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds? Go to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for the latest headlines and cutting-edge information.